Yusef Mack in the eighth round, 257. Here are the judges' scorecards. Fran Beckin had Cloud in front, 68-65. Jerry Griffin had Cloud in front. Adelaide Bird had Yusef Mack in front at the time of the stoppage by one point, 67 to 66. Well, we continue with our triple header here in St. Charles, Missouri, as we get set for our main event. Devin Alexander trying to bounce back from his loss to Timothy Bradley will step into the ring against hard hitting Lucas Matisse, who has 26 knockouts. And Larry Merchant, we'll start with you. When you take a look at Devin Alexander, I mean, he freely admitted that he screwed up in the fight against Timothy Bradley. Now, that frankness that he had with himself, will that pay dividends for him in his next fight, which is tonight? Might. Might. If he looks in the mirror and also sees how he barely escaped in his previous fight against Katelnik, a good European fighter, then he might try to rethink some things. Maybe try to change up a little bit and go after the other guy before the other guy gets him. But no, he hasn't looked into the mirror that deeply. He thinks he fought too hard against Bradley. Everyone else didn't see it that way. We'll find out if he can get that redemption on the T-shirt that he's wearing tonight. Roy, we had a chance to visit with Devin Alexander during the fighter meetings yesterday. What was the look that you saw in his eye coming off his first loss as a pro? Well, he had that look in his eye, that look where he was just kind of, you can tell he wants redemption, but at the same time, he's going through a lot of things, and you can tell that. So he's kind of in that zone to where he can come out of it because he understands the significance of the loss and he learned from it, or it can push him in a shell that he never could recover from. That's what everybody here tonight wants to see. Can he rebound from that devastating loss and return to where he was, which I think he was headed for superstardism, or is he going to let that get to him and disrupt his career? Lucas Batisse will provide the questions. Will Alexander have the answers? As we take a look at the tail of the tape, Alexander, 24 years of age, Matisse at 28. One inch height advantage for Matisse, half inch reach advantage. The weights, Alexander 139 and a half, rehydrated on our unofficial scales to 151. Matisse weighed in 140 on our unofficial scales. He weighed in tonight at 153 pounds. All right, let's take a look at the 140 pound division. Well, Timothy Bradley earned the top spot by stopping uh, Alexander in the 10th round, but now he's taken himself off the field of play in this division, maybe because he's hoping to get on the short list with uh, Manny Pacquiao. Amir Khan is up there, Maidana, who uh, is another kid, Cajones. Alexander, if he can beat Matese, better than Judah did, which was by a point and a split decision at home. And he's back in the picture. Right? First, he's got to do it. And here comes Lucas Batisse. On the road in Alexander's backyard. He was on the road back in November in New Jersey, virtually Judah's backyard. And Judah had the best of him in the early part of the fight. He was able to control the distance, use his quick hands, Matisse got off to a very slow start, but as the fight wore down, he broke down Judah. In fact, knocked him down in the 10th round, but it wouldn't be enough. Could not get to Judah and finish him off in the fight, and thus Zab Judah would escape with a split decision victory, winning by one point on the deciding judge's scorecard. So, Larry, that leads us to Matisse and what he may or may not have learned from that experience. Well, he learned that when uh, you go on the road, because that's where the money is, you better be a road warrior right from the opening bell. And to do that, he actually moved to uh, Oxnard, California, where so many fighters train these days, including his countryman, Sergi Martinez. And he sparred with Martinez, who is the middleweight champion, 20 pounds above where he is. So that shows his uh, seriousness of purpose. He comes from a family where his mother, father, brother, and sister were all prize fighters. As mom retired with a 1-0 record, his sister is still a pro, and his brother
brother Walter Matisse had a very good career. He's now retired. But when we asked Lucas who's the best of the bunch, he said very humbly, probably me. It comes from a rich tradition of uh, Argentine fighters. In fact, he was on the same amateur team as Marcus Maidana. They were friends. And then they had a box office in an empty arena with about a dozen people there scoring the fight to decide who got on the national team. Madonna won. So Matisse has made his way to the ring on the road once again in the backyard of his opponent, Devin Alexander. Well, here's Devin Alexander coming off the first loss of his professional career back in January when he squared off against Timothy Bradley in a much ballyhooed fight. Early on, Bradley fought his style fight, Larry. Roughed him up. There was a clash of heads in the third round that would cause a cut along the right eye of Alexander. And then as the fight wore down in the 10th round, once again, There'd be a clash of heads. That was in round number three. You see it coming up right here. The head of Bradley whacking the face and the left eye of Alexander. Timothy Desert Storm. It was another headbutt from Bradley. That turned out to be the lethal fight ending punch. Now he looks for redemption. Born and raised in North St. Louis, recently bought a home here in St. Charles. The first member of his family to own a home. He said, it's a dream come true. I love going out and cutting the lawn. Roy, can he cut out? the bad experience of his last fight in front of the hometown faithful. That's what everybody's here to see. He's in a great place to do it at. He's at home. So tonight, that's what his job is. That's what everybody's plan is. And we all hope that he can do that. I should point out here, Bob, that there was a lot of uh, criticism of the Bradley-Alexander fight because it went to a neutral site where it drawed what looked like a sparse crowd in a huge old dome there, about 6,000 officially. There's no more than that here in his hometown tonight. Well, you asked him the question, do they come to see you because they like you, or do they come to see you because they're fellow St. Louis natives? We'll find out if the crowd support helps as we send it back to the ring and Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, the boxing community lost a beloved family member today. Veteran boxing announcer and former CNN sports anchor Nick Charles passed away after a courageous battle with cancer. Nick loved the sport of boxing, its participants and its fans, and we loved him right back. At this time, we'd like to ask that you please rise and observe a moment of silence as we remember Nick Charles and honor his memory with boxing's traditional 10 count. We love you, Nick. Rest in peace. It's time for some mayhem in Missouri. This is your HBO Boxing After Dark main event of the evening. 
10 rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division, brought to you by Don King Productions, in association with Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, Arano Bach Promotions, and the movie Black Gold, Struggle for the Niger Delta, in theater soon. Your judges for this contest are Carlos Colon, Brent Miller, and Denny Nelson. And your referee in charge of the action is Rafael Ramos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the silver with black trim. He weighed in at 140 pounds with a record of 28 wins, just one loss, 26 wins coming by way of knockout from Trelu, Argentina, the number three ranked contender in the world by the WBO. Please welcome Lucas Mati. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with black trim. He weighed in at 139 and one half pounds. With a record of 21 wins, one loss, 13 wins by knockout. He is the former unified WBC and IBF super lightweight world champion from St. Louis, Missouri. He is Devin Alexander the Great. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Out of the ring, let's go. Let's go, guys, let's go. Okay, <clears throat> okay guys, you received the pre fine instructions. Re Recibiste las instrucciones. Protect yourself at all times. Protégete todo el tiempo. Give me a clean fight. Dame una buena pelea. Okay? Good luck. Buena suerte. Mateus has so many tattoos on his body, you think he owned the tattoo parlor, and he does. Alexander has as many tattoos as the day he was born, which is to <laughs> say none. He says he doesn't understand this whole tattoo thing, but he's going to try to tattoo Mateze. And I agree with it. And Matisse wants to tattoo Alexander with his power. 17 of his 26 knockouts have come inside of the first two rounds. Matisse also wears that ponytail, says it signifies unfinished business as a prize fighter in a career that began in 2004. He says when he achieves his ultimate goal, being a champion, he'll cut it off, but not until then. He said just missed with that right hand to the chin of Alexander. Alexander seems to be fighting with some uh, real purpose here in the early moments of the fight. Yeah, he's not moving around as much as we usually see him move around. He looks like he's dead serious here tonight. When you look at the history of boxing, losses have not always sort of derailed careers. In this recent era, a loss tends to become Armageddon. Was too much put into what happened against Bradley when you look at Alexander at 24 and what could potentially lie ahead of him? Yes, it was, I think. Yeah, uh, and. and uh, Sure, but it was built up as a big fight. Everybody in the boxing world wanted to see it. And Alexander oh, oh, got, made it the non-fight of the year. <laughs> and uh, so he was going to catch it for that. And now life goes on and see what he does next. That's life. That's boxing. What happens when you get clocked? What happens when you lose? Now you dust yourself back off. That's exactly right. Watch your head, cuidado con la cabeza. 
Tell you what, he's coming out much more aggressive than we were used to seeing him come out against a good hard punching opponent too. That's it. The heads came together there. Which is not uncommon. Southpaw against conventional right-handed fighter. The pace here in round number one between Alexander and Matisse. But this is what I want you to do. Do this for me. Relax a little bit. You know, you, you, you got to be all amped up. Don't be so amped up. You, you, you right on the money. You seeing everything. But you gotta touch, 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 bow, bow. And then you got to, you got to take that step around the corner, man. Because he gotta restart. Every time you take that step, he can't do nothing but restart and follow you and restart. Relax, relax. You're in control. Ready for the long haul. Relax. How are you doing? Good? Let your gloves go. Relax, Lucas. Relax. Aim and shoot his right to the body. Shoot your right to the body. I had to note that Alexander's trainer, Cunningham, wears a cardinal jersey of Ozzy Smith, the great wizard shortstop. Whereas most other fans in St. Louis are wearing Albert Pujols' jersey, one of the great hitters. So you know what he's thinking out here. <laughs> Be more like Ozzy. Don't the, slug like Pujols. Be the wizard. Talk about the bond between Alexander and his trainer, Kevin Cunningham. Alexander, when he was seven years of age in North St. Louis, wound up at a gym started by Cunningham. Matizzi has started faster, but Devin is staying right with him, if not going faster than him. You better believe he is. I'll get Matisse, Matisse's right, name right one of these times. Call him Lucas. <laughs> the Argentine junior welterweight. There was two of those. <laughs> Good shot. Good hook by Alexander coming in. I tell you what, both of these fighters are throwing some really serious punches tonight. Xander moves his head away from danger, short with the left hand. Finishes that exchange off with a right hook. Bring it up, bring it up, baby, let's go. Left hand on the belt line from Alexander. Matisse pumps out his jab. Good what, three jabs. Yeah. What Bradley could do that Matisse can't is to get inside and smother Alexander. Bradley's got that Tasmanian devil style. This whirlwind coming in. Matisse trying to put some pressure on. And he just landed the best right hand that he's probably going to land tonight. Oh. Alexander Anson with a quick yeah, left, good left hand. Great left hand. T says never been down as a pro. Told us twice as an amateur. He just came close then, though. Good brisk pace. Legs got tied up there. I got it. Alexander go. holds on. Stop. End of round two. How are you doing? Listen, relax. Do you feel it? Does he have any power? No. So, so come on, get in. Get in and change it up. Switch it up. But close up your defense so he doesn't catch you. That's it. 
You see, he doesn't have anything else. Just a jab and that's it. Look to your right. Touch him with that jab, touch him up, touch him down, spin him with the left hand, right hook. Turn that corner, man. All right? You, you, you see how easy his head, he don't move his head, so you're going to touch him when you get ready to drop your shot. Right here we see Devin Alexander lead with a good hook and a straight left hand down the middle that landed high on Matisse's head, but he stumbled after that shot like it may have hurt him. That's probably the best punch that Devin's landed all night. Go. Bound number three underway as we check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, I got a 19-19 one round apiece. Face, How about Lucas face. Matisse? I landed hey, enough right hands to the body it. in round five. one to Let's win go. that round. I, I don't know if anybody's counting how many punches Devin Alexander threw that was short. I mean, he, he shot with so many of his punches. It's unbelievable. And I thought uh, yeah. Lucas really outpunched him in the first round. Second round, Devin yeah. Alexander had a nice yeah. round, although he missed a lot of punches in round two. He is very, very aggressive. I wish he'd stop that grunting because he grunts every time he throws one punch, but he can't grunt for a combination, you know? Anyway, one round apiece. Got it, no punch it, no punch it. Limpio, let's go. Harold not liking the grunting. <laughs> they make it too much noise with it. <laughs> Good short left inside by Alexander. Oh, no, 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 it. uh, it's apparent that Alexander prepared for Matese, Matisse to uh, come forward um, at a steady pace. He knows exactly where he's going to be. Question is, can he hold them off? Left hand over the top from Matisse. Matisse okay. shoots a right and then a left. Good hook by Matisse. And the reason Harold doesn't no like the grunting no is because the grunting sig signifies one punch. Oh, there he threw a combination and grunted. Yeah, but he only grunted with the one power shot. It usually signifies one power shot. Hard to grunt twice back to back, and that's what Harold wants to see. And mean it. That's it, Olympio, that's it. Double right hand from Alexander. I got it, let's go. Don't hold their head, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey, no matter I got it, okay, let's go. Roy, is there anything more Matisse could be doing? Uh, no, I don't think there's much more he could do because Devin has the quicker hands. Devin has the, the correct set for, to accept him when he comes and to be ready to counter when he comes. So Got he's it. doing the best thing possible, which is Let's to go. try to push the issue. But like you say, Devin seems very well prepared for him. And, and let's keep in mind, this is a 10-round fight, uh, which would favor the boxer let it go, let it go. more than That's the it. aggressor. End of round number three. If you settle down, if you settle down, you're gonna be able to place your shots a little better. Just settle, settle down a little more. You don't have to carry yourself. You don't have to carry yourself so fast. All right. If you settle down, you'll be able to place your shots. You wanna blow your nose? Yeah. He won three rounds because he's outstanding. Yeah, boxing, yeah. Boxing. But, but when he right there at you in that in, in in this range right here, settle down and place your shots right down the pipe. Bing, 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 and short hooks and slide around the corner. All right. And when you go to your left, be all the way out. Don't all right. be halfway out where he can touch you. All right. All right? Keep boxing, baby. You're boxing. Devin good. Cunningham, the longtime trainer of Devin Alexander. When Devin was seven, he went to the gym. Kevin, a former police officer, and. North St. Louis in Hyde Park saw gangs and kids killing each other. 30 kids showed up to the gym that first day. Devin was one of them of those 30 original kids. And Alexander goes down. First time in his career. He caught him moving. I don't think it was a, a hurting punch necessarily. Uh, Devin, uh, Devin was smiling on the way down. 
But he put him in that position, put himself in that position, and so he has to suffer the consequences. So for the first time in his pro career, Devin Alexander down. Mat Matisse didn't get to Judah until late in the fight. Matisse throwing big shots, Alexander trying to counter. Yeah, Alexander still landing big shots too, but they both have been trading some big shots in the night. I get the impression, Roy, that Alexander pulls his shots. He doesn't really let it go. Well, he doesn't commit to all of his shots because mm he's -hmm. so quick. And most of the time, quick fighters can't commit to every punch. You commit to the one that you think will land. That preserves energy for the 12 round duration. The only problem we got here is that if Matisse is smart, he probably watched the Katelnik fight. They saw that Alexander wore a little bit in the Katelnik fight when Katelnik was able to push him. So that's probably what Matisse is trying to do here, push him to that range where he begins to tire so that he can get a little bit better adjustment than with Alexander's speed. Uh, that's why I said why that I think that a shorter fight favors Alexander. <laughs> and I agree with you. But fighting a guy with 20, 26 or 28 knockouts is very difficult in any, any length of a fight. He say not bothered by the punches of Alexander, continues to walk him down. And Alexander is showing that he's in very good condition because he come back from that knockout right away, knockdown right away, I mean. He's back up, he's back in control of himself, and it, it takes great physical condition to come from such a drastic knockdown as that was. Roll to the end of round number four, a round in which Devin Alexander Goes to the canvas. Huh? What's that? How your legs feel? Huh? Just huh? Just keep that circle going to your right, away from that right hand. Circle to your left. Settle down, man. Give me a water. Give me a rinse. All you gotta do is settle. Move your head, move your head, fake him. You know, he's kind of dizzy, so fake him, fake him. He, he see Matisse throw a jab, followed by a beautiful straight right hand where Alexander was trying to throw a jab back at him, which is why most of the time with an opposite handed fighter, you don't want to swap a jab for a straight right. Or a straight, yeah, exactly, straight right. Here again, you see him a block. The jab, throw the jab, followed by the right hand, right down the pipe. Great punch by Lucas Matisse. Alexander has now had his uh, first defeat and his first knockdown. Welcome to the big city. Well, he's just added another thing to his redemption list. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Matisse told us that he didn't come here to win this fight by decision, no way. Said I have to dominate him. Knockdown certainly helps. Doesn't seem deterred by any punches that he gets hit with from Alexander. to the body, left to the head from Matisse. And Matisse landed a great body shot at the end of the last round. I wonder if Devin's corner told him to go to Matisse's body a little bit to try to take some of that power away from him. Maybe so, because that was a good body shot. Don't hold it, don't hold it. 
was holding the back of Alexander's head, and then he hit him. Good body shot by Alexander. And this fight is only scheduled for 10 rounds. Alexander down in the fourth. Got it. I got it. Let's go. Come on, Devin. Come on, Devin. Don't hold it, Devin. Let's go. There have been fighters before who grunt when they punch, but I don't know that I've heard one at this high decibel. <laughs> Sounds like a Wimbledon tennis match. between Alexander and Matisse. Well, next Saturday night, the whole world talking about the heavyweight championship showdown in Germany. Who has Vladimir Klitschko beaten? You know, he's got a lot of names on his record, but how many of them will stand out in 15, 20 years' time? He needs a David Hay on his record for him to really claim that uh, he's any type of a uh, great. Did they face faster opponents? Yes. Did they face opponents that are punching harder? Yes. But those guys were quiet. Out of all the fights, there are 49 knockouts, and he's going to be number 50. HBO's World Championship Boxing, Klitschko versus Hay. Saturday, July 2nd, live from Germany at 4.45 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the replay at 9.45 p.m. Eastern and 9.45 p.m. Pacific. Now the fans here in St. Louis trying to rally Devin Alexander. Let's check in with Harold's scorecard. Okay, Bob, I'm going to 47-47, all even, in rounds three rounds to two, Devin Alexander. Now, first of all, let me say that the king of the grunt is, is Lamont Peterson. He's the absolute king so far among active fighters. Nobody grunts like Lamont. Anyway, Lucas Matisse gets an extra point in round four for knocking Devin Alexander down. Devin. Big heart came back around five after he had been down and out fought Lucas Matisse, just like you see right here. Doing a nice job out fighting the guy in close. So anyway, it's all even in, in points, but Devin Alexander is up three to two. In other words, points is more important. That's what counts. I've got it even. I have Matisse ahead by a point. I think that's a fair argument. It's been a pretty close fight. Both guys have landed some good shots. But Tisse, really good power shots. And Tisse has kept up with Alexander's pace as far as punches thrown, according to CompuBox. Each averaging 61 punches thrown per round. Boy, what? What can Alexander do to sort of slow down Matisse a little bit? He's got to hit Matisse's body more. Matisse is hitting him with some really good body shots, and he's not answering to Matisse's body that well. But Matisse is landing very good body shots on Alexander, and I think they're starting to show a little bit when he, when he gets to Alexander's body. Like that right there. See how we can see how weak is Alexander's punches there. Mm -hmm. See, but Alexander won't throw up for those punches to him like that. Alexander should be doing the same thing to Matisse. He should be going to Matisse's body hard when he gets a chance to. See that? Those are the punches that tell, and those are the punches that count in the long run. Alexander throws punches that makes the hometown crowd cheer. Matisse throws punches that look like they hurt. <laughs> Alexander does what they used to call in boxing, shoe shine. He throws those quick little punches. Um, they're bothersome 
but they're not going to hold anybody off or knock anybody down. But Harold know who is the best at that, so we ain't gonna talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you put some heavy polish on your shoe shining, Roy. <laughs> it was thick. Alexander with a couple of hooks upstairs. Matisse hooks to the body. Matisse landed a beautiful left uppercut, but he didn't follow anything with it. So Devin came back with a right uppercut of his own, and a, I mean left uppercut of his own, and a right uppercut. Then Matisse landed another straight right uppercut, but he followed this one with a left hook. Therefore, he was not able to get countered. Well, the action picked up in round number six. Round number seven underway. Matisse steps in with a right hand, left hook to the body. Alexander counters with a right. Matisse holds on. I think Alexander needs to go back to his boxing and not exchanging the big punches with Matisse because Matisse having 26 knockouts out of 28 wins, it's not really smart to exchange with him. Well, that's what his corner told him. When you box him, it's easier. Don't sit here and slug with this guy. And that's not really smart, especially since you've been down one time and you're just coming off your first loss. There's a right hand as Alexander went straight back and he ate some leather. That's why he should go back to boxing behind his jail. Good short uppercut inside by Matisse. Good right hand by Matisse. And follows it with another right. Right hand again from Matisse. Yeah, because Devin Alexander is standing right there with him trying to fight him. And it's not boxing, so that's allowing Matisse, who is really the puncher in this fight, to land some really big punches. Like that. Alexander absorbing some big shots here in round seven. And trying other, to hold on. Yeah, and the other problem we see is that those body shots that Matisse has landed early are starting to show up now because Alexander seems really, really fatigued here. Matisse wears the tattoos. He's tattooing Alexander with thunderous punches. Ended by those body shots. Like now Alexander answers back with a good body shot. Does Alexander throw good body punches, Roy? Yes, he does when he, when he commits to him, but he just doesn't commit to him all the time. And those hurt him just right there. Yeah. Those two body shots really hurt him just there from Matisse. Big he, round for Matisse. Yeah, when he commits to the body shots, he does throw good ones, Larry. He's a very strong puncher, but right now he's not doing well. He's tired, and he's not fighting a small fight. He's brawling with the brawler, and I don't think that's a smart idea. His legs are weakening. Those body shots are really showing up, and you got a guy here that's a knockout artist, and you're fighting him toe to toe. Not very smart. Big seventh round for Matisse. Well, earlier tonight, Berman Stiverne against Ray Austin in the 10th round. He finishes Austin off with a right hand to the temple at 43 seconds. Austin was leading on two of the three judges' scorecards through nine rounds. Stiverne gets the victory.
That's Boris Cloud defending his 175 pound title. Yusef Mack fought a disciplined fight, but that left hand hurt Mack in the eighth round. Cloud finished him off. Win number 23. Cloud was ahead on two of the three judges' scorecards when the fight was stopped at 257 of round eight. And grab him on the inside. Okay. Let's go, Kevin. All right. Lucas Matisse with a big round seven. Hurting Alexander. Alexander was dropped for the first time in his career in the fourth round. And you saw Matisse's first power punch was to the body this round. Good uppercut. Left hand by Matisse. Fight. Alexander was moving around, uh, sitting in there, and now he's in a retreat mode, Roy. He got to learn how to catch his second win. He doesn't really know how to fight off his second win yet. I think that's kind of the same thing that hurt him in the in the fight against Bradley, because he's not really good at operating off his second win. He got to believe in himself a little more. I remember last August in St. Louis against Katelnik. Katelnik rallied late. Alexander did win the decision. Yeah, I don't think he believes in himself a lot when he gets tired. And he can't keep back and straight up against this good right hand puncher like this either. Right. Then somebody famously said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. <laughs> oh, good left uppercut by Matisse. Then a right hook to the ear. Yeah, he's really putting a hurt on Alexander right now. Good body shot by Alexander, but it may be a little too late. He already has given Matisse too much confidence, and Matisse is really hurting his body really bad right now. Breaking him down. I would say, Roy, that Matisse has taken the confidence. Yeah, he has taken it. You spar with the middleweight champion of the world, and now you're in a, an event with a smaller guy who isn't a big puncher in his own division. All oh, the big heavy punches coming from Lucas Matisse. Good hook, good hook by Alexander too. Combination by Matisse. Snap back the head of Alexander. Short right from Devin Alexander. But the bouncing is really just wearing him down right now. The bouncing, he's just losing time and, and losing energy with all the up and, up and down bouncing. He's bouncing to no avail for no reason, so he's just working for no reason. Give Alexander credit. He's trying to fight back. Yes, he is, but he's getting caught with some really big punches, and he's giving it his all. But he has a really hard time right here dealing with fatigue, and you can see it in him right now. Good body shot, though. You hurt Matisse with that body shot. If he did this more often, he'd be much better off right now. But he's training with the guy with the heavier hands, and Matisse smiles at him at the end of round eight. Can you do something? Can you do something for me, man? Please, please, please. On the inside, just grab this motherfucker, man. Get this motherfucker two or three times and hold this motherfucker. I mean, every time. Get this. I said, it's only two left. It's only two left. What you have to do is move your head. Move your head. Matisse right here is landing a good straight right hand right down the middle against Devin Alexander, which is a great punch against the southpaw. And when he does it, Alexander only can lean forward because these shots are really hurting him. This fight is turning out to be the fight that Bradley and Alexander was supposed to be. Exactly. Once again, you see a straight right hand right down the middle to the body in the solar plexus, and that's a very difficult shot to live with. It takes rounds off of a fighter. Matisse looks fresh. Alexander concerned and tired. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. I've got it four rounds apiece, but 76, 75 in points in favor of Lucas Matisse. In other words, I've got Matisse winning the fight by one point. He's got a, you know, that one point pull in the scores. 
because of the, the knockdown of round four. Lucas Matisse had two tremendous rounds in round seven and eight. We really hurt Alexander in both rounds with right hands. I mean, you know, Devin's just standing in there and trying to trade with a puncher. And he's just not doing it. I mean, Lucas just hits too hard. Matisse seems to be a guy who finishes very, very strong, just like we saw in his Zab Judah fight. 76-75, Lucas Matisse. Along with Roy Jones and Larry Merchant, Bob Papa ringside in St. Charles, Missouri. Devin Alexander, Lucas Matisse in a 10-round showdown. Alexander dropped for the first time in his pro career in round number four. Larry, do you think that Matisse did enough in the earlier rounds as opposed to the Judah fight where he could be carrying judges scorecards? I think he could. I don't know if he will. Well, I'll tell you, this is being a good round for Devin, Devin Alexander here. He's getting off first. He's landing, he's not bouncing, he's punching and stepping to the side. This has been a very good round for him. Alexander wings the left hand. Well, he's playing the crowd very well. You know, like a pro. Uh, he's, the crowd wants him to win, the crowd's on his side. And when he throws those short, sharp little punches, they get excited. Maybe the judges will get excited too. But he is having a good round here. And Matisse is starting to show a little fatigue now. They've been doing a smarter thing by boxing him now. Not trading with him. That's very smart. That's what the corner told him. A good body shot, a good head shot. Yep. Very good round for Alexander. And you can see some confidence back in him. Matisse says, let's slug. Counter left from Alexander. Matisse doesn't budge. And that time Alexander held on like his corner told him to do. Smartest thing he can do. Oh, good body good shot body by shot Matisse. Matisse. Wow. And with those body shots there, you notice we don't see no punches for a, a little bit of time in a fight. Takes you a while to recover from those. Good round though for Alexander. Yes, it was. Stuck to the game plan. The last one. Well, if you missed any of tonight's telecast, you can catch it at the dates and times listed below. Last round, box him, take him to school just like that. Last round, you win this round, you win the fight. Okay. Lots of hands, throw lots of punches. Let's go, press him. Finish it strong, finish it all. He says only other loss in his, only loss of his career came on the road. He's on the road again against Alexander. Tenth and final round underway. Close fight. Good left hand by Matisse to start round ten. Alexander seems to be rejuvenated from that good round he had in the last round. So maybe we'll see a different Alexander. Good right hand by Matisse. Alexander digs back in. Alexander seems to know he's fighting for his life here as a top fighter. Can Alexander stick to that game plan that worked well in round nine? Did Matisse get those body shots going? Let's slow down Alexander. Good hook by Matisse. Excellent hook, but Matisse is just as tired as Alexander is. Let me, let me ask you fellas, who's done the most damage? Who's landed the higher punches? Matisse. Without a doubt. Like that combination right there. 
That to me is what price is what price fighting is all about. Yeah, but Devin Alexander is giving it his all and he's showing that he's not giving up. You're right. He's giving us what we want to see out of him. He's giving us what we want to see in him in the Bradley fight. And no matter who wins, we'll undoubtedly see both of them again. Exactly. And that's how we like for them to end. Remember the knockdown in round number four. Alexander got dropped. He had a close fight. That could be the difference on the judges' scorecards. Alexander dead tired now. He needs to hold on like his corner told him because he's dead tired. The bouncing around seems to take a lot out of his legs. Can say nothing of the punches. Yeah, the harder punches been land by Matisse in this round. You're not going to win that fight, son, by backing up in the tenth round. <laughs> Matisse has been appreciably, appreciably busier, according to the copy box stats in this round. Slight cut on the right eye of Alexander. At this point in the fight, I don't think it'll make a lot of difference. It doesn't make any difference, Roy. <laughs> but if we want to see the blood of drama, we got a little bit of it. And now the drama will be who gets the decision in one fighter's hometown. I thought Matisse won the fight. I'd like to see it again. Certainly landed the harder punches in the last round, according to CompuBox, 14 of 85. Of those 14 connects, 12 were power shots, 12 of 60 for Matisse. Alexander threw just 47 punches in that last round. 13 of 47. See Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard. He gave the last round of Matisse in a one point decision. And let's take a look at what really Roy could be the difference in this fight between a draw and a win for Matisse. And it came in round number four, the knockdown of Alexander. Yeah, he right came hand. with a good straight right, right down the pipe, stepped the left hand and came with a one two. Beautiful Four. right hand straight down the pipe of a southpaw, and that could be the difference in the fight. Let's take a look at the judges that are scoring this fight, this 10 round fight between Devin Alexander and Lucas Matisse. Carlos Colon hails from Puerto Rico, 14 title fights on his resume. Brett Miller out of Kansas, no title fights. McClain's decision over Smith. He had it comfortably for McClain. And Denny Nelson out of Minnesota, 35 title fights in Alexander's decision over Katelnik. He had Alexander comfortably ahead by four points in a fight in which Alexander faded down the stretch. Alexander rallied with a very good ninth round, but in the tenth round he got outworked by Matisse. Matisse landed some big shots in that tenth round. Will it be enough for Devin Alexander, or did Lucas Matisse get that road win? After the disappointing loss to Zab Judah back in November on a split decision. Did he do enough early? Did he carry some early rounds, middle rounds? He showed his power. We showed you the knockdown in the fourth round. Is there redemption for Alexander or more questions? Time for the judges scorecards as we set it back up to the ring and Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen from the family arena in St. Charles Missouri after 10 action packed rounds we go to the scorecards. Judge Carlos Colon scores it 96 93 Alexander. Brett Miller scores about 96 93 Matisse. And Denny Nelson scores the bout 95-94 for your winner by split decision from St. Louis, Missouri, Devin Alexander the Great. Well, even in a 
his hometown, there are some boos here in the arena about that decision. Split decision win for Devin Alexander. Well, you can't ask for much more than that uh, from Lucas Matisse coming into a guy's hometown and getting a, a split decision win. I mean, a loss. You know, usually that means that was a very close fight. I would have been satisfied with a draw, and I would still like to see the fight again on mutual ground. Total punches in the fight. Matisse was busier. He landed more shots. They both landed at a percentage of 21%. As we take a look at the power numbers, the heavier handed Matisse threw 208 more power shots, connecting on 124, 24%. And he did drop Alexander in the fourth round. We take a look at the punch zone statistics. To the left, the punches landed on Alexander. 42 to the body. Didn't pay enough dividends. Alexander landing 94 to the head. Let's send it up to the ring. Larry Merchant is with Devin Alexander. Devin, Devin, congratulations. Were you worried about getting that decision in the, your hometown? Yeah, he, he was a good fighter. He was a good fighter. I take nothing from him. He pressed me like crazy, but I was in shape. I was in Colorado running the altitude, so. You got knocked yeah. down for the first time in your career. Yeah. What were your feelings at that time, and did you know you were now going to have to come from behind? It was a flash. It was a flash. I wasn't hurt. I wasn't hurt at all. So it was just a flash knockdown. You know, I got back up. Hey. Do you, have, do you think you came out fighting harder, fighting more at close quarters with Matisse because of what happened against Bradley? Definitely, I wanted to show people that I'm a warrior. People say I quit it in the Bradley fight. I wanted to come back and show them that I got heart, and I am one of the best 140 pounders. Thank you. Again, congratulations. Thanks, Larry. You said, hey, hold on. You said I, I had a lot of explaining to do, so I guess I got a lot of explaining to do this fight, huh? You did some, exp some explaining. Okay. Not all together. I'm not going to give you that much. But you did a good fight. Thank you. Congratulations on another good fight. You must feel that um, it's not a good idea, except for the money, to fight here in the U.S. You know, I don't, I don't do it for the money, I do it for the glory. And today I gave it all. You came out starting faster as you said you would. You, you knocked him down early, you landed most of the heavy blows. Is this even harder for you than the loss to Judah? It was a tough fight, but I think I won it. I won it. Once again, they robbed me here in the United States. Look at my face and look at his face. That's right. You said it best. Thank you. Bob? All right, thank you very much, Larry. A split decision win for Devin Alexander. Another tough road loss for Lucas Matisse and uh, Carlos Colon one of the judges had a 96 93 for Alexander which means it was seven rounds to three um, obviously with Alexander going down one of those was a two point round for Matisse but that fight was a lot closer Roy and I thought Matisse finished it pretty strongly at the end. I thought it was a lot closer and I thought he did finish it really strong at the end. Uh, however you know you have to give your Devin Alexander his credit. He did come out and show that he could bounce back. He didn't come back and take an easy fight. He took a very tough fight in a guy that's 28 and one with 26 knockouts. So Devin Alexander didn't come back trying to fool himself nor the public. He came back. He took a class A opponent. He didn't necessarily dominate the class A opponent. It was a very good fight. Uh, one that he was lucky enough to get the decision on but however I still take my hat off to him also take my hat off to Lucas Matisse because he once again goes right into a guy's backyard puts his hands up and say I'm in your backyard and I'm coming to beat you and when he leaves it's still indecisive or whether who won the fight or not we really can't say that there was a clear winner tonight split decision win for Devin Alexander here in his hometown St. Charles Missouri where he recently bought a home Larry your impressions of Devin Alexander, and did he answer those questions that we had coming in? Oh, 
Well, I think he redeemed himself in a way by making a good fight. I don't know that uh, the game of boxing rede redeemed itself by taking a second straight a fight away from Matisse. Um, no one fight uh, can remove you from the mirror of time, as an old Roman poet put it. And I think in that sense, um, both of them have showed that they have something that we want to see again. And this is not a one-fight game. Thank you very much, Larry. Pleasure working with you, as always. Well, we started off our main event this evening with the traditional boxing 10 bell count for the passing of Nick Charles. In my opinion, the bell rings forever for one of the classiest gentlemen who waged a courageous battle against cancer and was an inspiration to all of us. More importantly, Nick Charles was a colleague of ours here at HBO and a friend not only to the fight game, to broadcasters across the country. Nick had one request in his final months, and that was to call one more fight. And it was with great pleasure that we had an opportunity to share the microphone with one of the classiest acts in broadcasting, Nick Charles on Boxing After Dark. Here's Nick in his own words. The boxing community through this battle of cancer has been absolutely beyond what I could ever imagine. From fans, referees, judges, timekeepers, fighters, the encouragement has been unimaginable to me. And why I want to do this boxing after dark is to inspire others to do what you love regardless of the circumstances in your lives. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.